I've been meaning to do a video like this for a good while, um, but unfortunately I always got so excited about the arrival of a new machine that I would do all of this work before I remembered to video it, and then because I always maintain my machines, there's never really an opportunity to do this again. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about what happens when you get a new, a new to you sewing machine, which needs fully servicing, but has locked up. So I got this this particular Kenmore machine. It's a cl duplicate of, well, almost. This is a 1030, whereas I have recently got a 1040 as well. But I thought, well, I'll get this one because it it's uh, in case I ever need parts, which is unlikely, but for the time being, the thought is it's a parts machine. Um, but the reality is the machine is in very good condition, so it's unlikely that um, it would be parted out for any reason. It'll probably just be brought back to life, and then I'll get tired of having two around unnecessarily, and off it goes. But anyway, I did open this up to see what we had before, and it was very stiff, so I thought, aha! Once I ha that gives me an opportunity to... Um, to demonstrate what happens when you get a, a brand new locked up machine. So what you can see here is it's if the foot like so stiff I can't really turn it. So where do we start with this? So the first thing that I always find really important is make sure Here's a classic example. So the problem with it locking up could be actually because the bottom case isn't in right. So I always, always, always take out the bottom case fully. These class 15 are super easy to do this with. And then, and sure enough, there's the first start. It's, it's moving. It's not 100% right. That's a bit of a strange feeling. That's not quite 100% what I expect it to feel like, but we will continue the process. So, these ones are very easy because the top just pops off. So we know we're going to have to oil in there and check all the grease levels and everything else, but I also need to do the bottom. So I don't like that, it's, it's sort of... The bobbin mechanism doesn't feel very right. It's, it's not turning smoothly. It should be soon. See that funny click? That's a bit strange for these machines. So we need to take a look and see what's going on. Um, so on top you can see... Oops. I need better lighting. Yeah, you can see there's a gear in there. It does have some grease on it. Um, but we'll need to take a look at that. And then start with all of this. So I'm going to take the bottom off now and we'll start. Actually, I usually like to let gravity take the K. So let's get the uh, necessary spots. Now, the first time I do this, I, I am a little over generous in reality um, on the oil because. I just find it, it, you really need to penetrate these machines the first time. I need a better lighting source here. So, you know, this this machine hasn't corroded. Like some of the machines I've done, you have to actually get and use electrolysis to uh, to resolve all the issues. But in this case, that that won't be necessary. This machine hasn't sat in a dark. This isn't.
the electrolysis, like it won't need a severe going over because it's not damp, but it's definitely going to need a good drowning the first time just to make sure it recovers from being dry for so long. So we'll take this foot off. Well, that's interesting. This machine's different than 1040 doesn't have a pop out straight stitch plate. Interesting. I didn't know there was that difference between this machine. Okay. Well, it's definitely moving a little better than it did before. So we need to get underneath and oil it and change the grease and stuff. That's important. So let me get my screwdriver and we'll. Ooh, that's good and stiff. Okay, let's take this bottom off. I might bring my extra light source over because it makes it a lot easier to see what I'm doing. Hopefully, it won't blow the image too much. Wow, this is this is surprisingly different than the 1040. There are different screws here on the bottom. So I think this case is actually easier to come off. You don't need to take that off. Let's see two screws there, so let's start with that. Hmm, that screw's a little strange. It wasn't in straight. So hopefully that hasn't been stripped, but we'll deal with that in a minute. see any reason why this shouldn't just pop off, but it's not being particularly cooperative. Uh, unless those tiny little screws there, that's a bit odd. Okay, this one is quite different. And smaller even still. See these tiny Tiny, tiny little screws here holding that in. Hopefully I've got something small enough. I'd have to get... That's a bit awkward for sure. Those are really tiny. Hmm.
Okay, I shall have to dig out another screwdriver one moment. Okay, so here are the tiny little screws. There's tiny little, if I move this light source over here, it might make it a little easier to see what we're doing. There we are, yeah. Okay, so let's see if this one fits. Yay! Okay, so that one works. Now, I'm hoping that will... Yeah, that did it. So now we've got the back of the side off. Whoops! There's the screw. Put the screw safely away. So... Uh, yeah, I, oop, sorry, let's do the zoom out. Oop, wrong way. So I'm just taking a look at how the belts look. They're yeah, on these Kenmores because they don't need to be over too tight because they're cogged belts. So I think we're kind of okay on there. It doesn't seem to be slipping at all. So let's see how if this thing is ready to come off yet. Aha! There's one more screw there. Didn't notice that before. That's definitely releasing it. Okay, we have success. So put the screw away safely. There we are. So what have we got going on here now? So again, the usual is we've got to do some oiling. I'll check the grease there in a minute. Um, these always need oiling the uh, feed dog drop stuff. They're very not used all that often. Oop, that's nice and smooth. That's actually working better than... Nice. Interesting. It's working much better than on my 1040. So it's almost like maybe my a screw this screw or the spring is not in mine because mine, mine was quite stiff and it still is so yes I know a lot of you are going you're over oiling I know but for the first one I want to make sure that this is getting a little bit of love now the good news is on this particular machine they haven't used the wrong type of oil it just looks more like they haven't oiled it in a long, long time. So there's no build-up of bad oils. Okay, let's see what we've got going on now. Okay. gears in here. So that's why you always need to spin so you can see there's another mechanism in there that you need to oil. Yeah. And looking for metal on metal. In there, I think. A little bit more because this is very dry. Ooh, starting to get some squeaks that we didn't have before.
Okay. Motor's a bit squeaky, so that might need uh, some surgery. Aside from that, we seem good now. It's definitely moving a lot better than it was. Okay, so let's change check the grease. Now this is different again. Interesting how different... Oh, that's different. It's definitely different than the 1040. How fascinating. to see that little screw in there. It's quite dark. Oh, we got that. that's working. Okay. okay, yes, definitely not the color grease I hope for, which is not surprising. Uh huh. So what we can see automatically is that this is pretty brown, gross grease in there. So we definitely want to uh, do a little clean up on that. And what you can see automatically is that I haven't even switched the machine on yet. I'm just turning it by hand. To feel it if there are any rough spots or anything else. So we need to do something about the grease. So we shall begin on that. Same procedures I did before. Try and get out the old icky grease first. There's not much in here actually. But you know, it shouldn't really be that gross. It's thick, it's goopy, but that's what happens with grease. It dries out over time and it gets corroded by the atmosphere, so definitely want to uh, clean that out. There's very little grease in here, which is not actually a good thing. That means these metal things have been sitting on each other for a bit. But that's okay, there's just a Yep, so we're ready to re-grease. This is a super simple one. some nice essentially Vaseline not much different just a little stinkier and we're going to scoop some in here Now the thing is, 
it just needs to be metal on metal contact. However, you've got steel parts which are exposed to the air and it's usually a good idea if you can just put a little coating of grease on these steel parts even if they're not rubbing against each other it just protects it a bit better okay, let's see. 100% where we need to be yet I would definitely say we're pretty good on that now. So you can see it does tend to squish the grease out of the way a bit, so sometimes you might have to just pack it in a little higher so that with time it, it gravity will keep it um, greased up, but as long as you keep on and keep an eye on it, it, it should never run dry like it was before, so it should never be a problem. Okay. Okay, I would say that's greased now. Just clean the extra goop off of here. And of course, put a little little blob in here, is in this reservoir thing, because that, that's runs under the bottom of that, and that will make sure it always. This is your classic example of where a good fitting screwdriver helps, because otherwise you need a magnetic one. Okay. So how are we doing? drop there. You can see it's already getting pretty smooth. I would say now is when I want to plug this in and then see how it, it, the lubrication has worked. So in this case, because this machine isn't super old and I'm using the electrics from the, their sound and this is the one from the other one, I'm not so worried about Ooh, the light even works. Getting electrocuted. Checking that I can see oil in every every part here before I put the bottom back on. Just so I know that I've definitely given it a good first go. So you know, later on you just oil it the project. OK. 
Okay, I'm happy with that from the bottom, so I'm going to put the bottom back on. And then we'll take a look at the top. Okay. So, one thing that is good to do is just to put a little oil in the screw holes. It just helps prevent any corrosion. And I'll leave the side off, or the back off, this side end until the very end. It's just one screw, so there's no great need. Okay. Okay, so one of these was not screwed in straight before, so we're about to find out if the screws are, the threads are straight. No, that one actually seems okay. Okay, I don't need that to be that tight, just firm. Perfect. Okay, and... Smaller screw head would be good. Okay. Which I might, since I'm here, just put a little oil on the screw threads. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, good. Now, let's take a look and see what we've got going on on the top. So I think we'll put a little grease here. So it used to have grease, but it's a bit gross. So we'll put a little grease there. You can either oil these or grease them, but if you, you just need to make sure they're kept wet, because you need the metal on metal to be not stressed. Okay. You know what grease is? It is awful. It's hard to get off. It's Grease dispenser might be a good investment for future, but uh, to be honest, I use, use the singer squeezy things and they're quite easy to, app to apply the grease in these. Okay, I'm good with that. Wipey. So, clean off the excess. I'd say that's running nice and smoothly now. Oh, there's the bits I was looking for. So, awkwardly on the machines, the oscillating motion is hidden under here, so it's really easy to not see it when you're oiling. In this part you can see going up and down. But this side-to-side -side one is, you have to access it from the front, so you don't necessarily notice it as much as you should on this machine. Okay, the reverse motion is pretty smooth in there, but I'll just get in there and oil these up. 
So now it's starting to sound like the, the 1030 should. Very smooth now, as you can see. Just one moment. Okay, so let's see if we've got a bit more. This is definitely not 100% here. Still. Which is interesting. Definitely got a problem with this turny knob. So we've got to figure out what's going on here. I'm not sure where the mechanisms are under here, how this is supposed to quite work. So we'll just seeing some movement down here so let's get in here with the old squirty since we know these are all metal bits down here we need a bit of love Ooh, we're starting to get some movement Definitely not engaged, so that's supposed to be black. Oh, maybe it is. Not showing up just as standard zigzag. Oh. Okay. Straight, full zigzag. Well, not 100% yet in the width, um, which is what I found with my other machine. It was a bit stiff and had to be encouraged along. This bit in here was just not happy. It took a bit of persuasion to get it to go full zigzag. Oh, we're starting to get extra movement now. Little, little oil on the side of this because it slides in between metal. And then the hinge up here. Make sure that. Yeah, we're getting full zigzag now. Good. So let's try multi-point zigzag. Perfect. That's working. Buttonhole. Yeah, that's definitely in the right side. How nice is this? It's <laughs> working fine. Yeah. I hate the smell of that grease. Put the lid back on. Okay. Then blind him. That one's not kind of blind. That one is, is definitely not right. Ah, it's working now. So this is it's still a bit stiff in there. So it's not 100% because this should be in zigzag mode. And it's, it's, and that's definitely blind. This should just be 100%. This 
little stiff. I'm not sure whether or not that will just fix itself over time. Yeah, that cam follower is starting to move, I'm glad to say. So, give it a little bit more love here because it's not 100%, still resting sometimes on the wrong cam. A little bit. Okay, so should be that's still on. That's on blind, so it's a little bit hit and miss. Weird. There's blind him. It's interesting. So it jumps for some reason. That's some zigzag finally. Multi point, good. Still multi point, but it's a bit sticky. Just needs a bit of encouragement. Definitely starting to uh, free up. But as you can see, it just takes a bit of time and a bit of love. So that's. Multi points fine. So let's see if we can. Yep, blind. Yeah, it's just a bit sticky, but it's definitely working it better. Multi point, yeah. Yeah, it's just a bit sticky still. Yeah, it's just a bit stiff. But we're definitely a lot more. Yeah, it's just a bit. But with use and stuff, it'll free up. So this machine's basically 100% now. Just need to... Uh, the bobbin case back in, so we'll do that. That might be a bit too tall. So, okay. So, a little drop there and a little drop there where the metal metal. So, Is always one of the classics. If you've got big hands, getting your hands in there is always a bit fun, but that's okay. So I'm just turning it on my head, which I'm sorry you can't see anything, but uh, I'll tip it back up. There we are. So now I need to put this in. It just slides in nice and easy. Then you get the clip there and the clip there. Test it by hand first. Perfectly smooth, as you can see there. Just make sure this is has been given a bit of oily. Yeah, that's now lubricated. Just a little bit on the end there. Perfect. Got a bit of grease because my hands are greasy on this handle, so I need to clean that off. Get a bit of alcohol and clean that off shortly. 
You know, you really can't grumble about that machine, can you? Absolutely brilliant. I'll give it a little bit of a run in. It does help to warm it up as well. Make sure that everything is perfectly uh, fine-tuned. You will need to wipe it down after because it, it will be a bit, bit grumbly. What you'll notice is sometimes it, it's a bit thirsty the first time you go over it. Um, just because it hasn't been oiled in so very long. So you might... ...need to redo things if you see them drying out again very quickly. Because it should remain a little coat of oil, a little drop of oil. Another thing I don't like is I'm hearing the feed dogs. That click. Okay, let's take a look at the feed dogs. You shouldn't hear click, 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 click. That means they're not hitting anything, so that means they're a bit sticky somewhere still, so we need to take a look at that. Okay, so this machine is quite short under here, so you might need to use one of your little... No, that's too tight. So this is going to be a bit of a challenge to get in here to loosen these. Might have to use... One of the reasons why I've got this kind of tool if you can get a bit of torque in squishy places. There we are. So. Okay. Okay, let's see what this one. Oh, that's good and tight. Oh, someone overdid it. A bit of oil in the holes will make a big difference. But this is interesting because this one only has a zigzag plate. Very interesting. So I might see if I can uh, change it over for the type of the 1040, which is the replaceable plate. But. As I said, this is parts machine, so I'm not too worried about it. Okay, let's see what we've got going here. Okay. Hopefully these are loose enough now that I can use this, which is a little easier. Yeah, a little looser now. Okay. They're not really dirty in here.
Okay, I would say it's just still bedding in a bit. A little bit more oil, I'm guessing, on that bit down there, where it slides back and forth. Let's see if I can show you the bit that I'm looking at. Yeah, there it is. See this bit here? So this, def I think this is where our guilty clicky click was coming from. See how it has to slide back and forth, so you need to make sure that's good and oiled. So it's definitely running perfectly smoothly now. Yeah. See what happens when we put the uh, plate back on. Okay, and of course we'll put a little drop in here, a little drop in there for screws. Raise the feed dogs. Yeah. I think that was a bit of an anomaly, a bit of more oiling and stuff and no click. That's the wonderful thing about these really beautifully made machines is you know when the noises they should make and the noises they shouldn't. So if you hear things, of course, you know, sometimes you have to just let age take its toll and that's it, but... Um, but normally these metal machines, if they've not been abused, and this one clearly hasn't, um, just needed a bit of love. There shouldn't be any strange clicky noises or anything else. They should run literally like a well-oiled engine, like perfectly smoothly, nothing odd. That's the beauty of these machines. I'm not going to over tighten this, it doesn't need to be, it should just hold securely. And this one. Okay, and one quarter turn back quarter turn back so screws don't lock in place. Perfect. Good. No weird clicks anymore. So I'd say that's a, a fantastic save. Of course it's one of those things, now what do I do? So this machine doesn't have a foot pedal, um, a foot controller. So, one would need to be procured before it went to a new home, but that's not difficult to do at all. Ten more controllers are quite common. So I just have to find one that's one amp, or I think this might, yeah, I think this is a one amp machine. plate on. I might just put a little drop of oil in there as well. screws. <sighs> I 
and top cover back on. Plug in for test. Yeah, it's definitely loosened up already perfect lovely perfect